Go to the question for the carbonyl compounds playlist and as always the link to the questions in the description of the video if you wanted to try it first. Okay, so make a start. So the test to confirm the presence of the carbonyl group, you'd add 2,4-DNP or Brady's reagent and an orange precipitate produced indicates a carbonyl group's present. How would you identify the carbonyl compound but not use spectroscopy? You would measure the melting point of the purified precipitate and compare to known data values. Part two, the chemical test that would identify whether the carbonyl is an aldehyde. So you'd add tollens or you could say ammoniacal silver nitrate and the production of a silver mirror confirms the aldehyde group. Moving on to part B, so first thing I'm going to do is work out the empirical formula using this information. So there's all the working out there. The empirical formula comes out at C3H6O. So the next thing we must do is work out the MR of that. It's 58. And then if we look at the mass spectra, so we'll look at F first, we've got um, a peak here at 58. So it's looking like the molecular ion peak is that one. And then if we look at G, we've got another 58 here. Remember these peaks that are just one or two units higher than uh, the molecular ion peak, they're due to the presence of isotopes. So we now know that the um, MR is 58 of both molecules. So that means the molecular formula is the same as the empirical formula. So I would just get that into my answer like this. Both spectra show a molecular ion peak at M over Z 58. Therefore, the molecular formula is also C3H6O. So if we think about what options we've got, we know that they're both carbonyl compounds. So the only two that work are propanol and propanone. So all we're going to do now is go back to the mass spectra and find evidence for which one's F and which one's G. So I've just zoomed out so we can see both mass spectra on the screen. So I hope you can see everything OK. Remember, these are our options. So what we need to do is look for obvious differences in the fragmentation patterns um, of the mass spectra and then establish which um, compound can form a particular fragment and which one can't. So I think the example has been a bit, little bit naughty here in terms of the fragments that they've given us. So if we start with this one here, so we've got this huge peak here at M over Z43 for G. So if you think about how 43 could form, the MR is 58 of both of them, remember. So to get to 43, we need to lose 15. So that's a classic loss of a CH3 group. Well, both of these structures can actually lose a CH3 group. Um, but for some reason, this one here isn't shown a peak at 43. So that's a bit of a red herring, that one. So the other obvious one is the peak in F at M over Z29. So this really tall one here. Now, only one of these two molecules can actually form a peak at 29. And it's this one here. So if this broke off here, um, the 29 could either be due to um, an ethyl frag fragment, c 2 h 5 plus, or it could actually be due to this fragment here. H to C double bond O. So this molecule here, propanol, is F, and this one here, propanone, must be G. So in terms of justification, I'm just saying um, F shows a fragment at M over Z29. That's due to C to H5 plus or CHO plus, and we'll just say G is unable to make this fragment.